Hi guys, I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about the different options for performance batteries for your Suron. I know a lot of you are spending, you know, very serious money on buying batteries for your bikes and I thought it'd be good to talk about different options available and I'd like to do a, a really strict comparison test between a few of them just to see how they perform and what, what are their disadvantages and advantages. So firstly, I want to give you a little bit of background uh, on my history. So over the last 12 years, I've been involved in some very high level projects uh, with battery vehicles. Uh, one was an electric bus project working with uh, Toshiba. And we were working with them on their one of their development cells, which was a lithium ion titanate cell and the objective was to be able to charge this full-size bus in 15 minutes and we had a one uh, designing a one megawatt um, charging system so those cells were specialist cells and i got to work very closely with their engineers um, and found out a lot about how their cells worked and you know what's required in a battery management system and you know the different aspects of uh, lithium-ion batteries also got to work on other projects, electric car projects, and because of that I was able to uh, travel to Japan and go through at an executive level the Panasonic factory. Um, also got to go through uh, several Chinese lithium-ion battery factories as well at an executive level. Um, so all of those uh, experiences have helped me to understand a little bit about um, lithium-ion batteries, their limitations, their advantages. I'm no expert, um, but I'd like to share a few things with you just so that, you know, the objective is to get the best possible battery or understand how they work in your, in your uh, Suron. So I've got four different batteries here, all slightly different. Stock battery. Now this stock Suron battery has a Panasonic 18650 cell and it has a battery management system that limits the flow of power in and flow of power out. In this particular case, this is a bypass battery. So what does that mean? What that means is that the discharge cycle or this discharge side of the battery where the power comes out has been bypassed so that it tricks the battery management system and has no restrictions. So in this particular case, what would happen is that you would have the maximum amount of power out that the cells are capable of. Now, that's around the 7.2 kilowatts, 7 kilowatts, depending on your battery life. And it basically lets you get more performance over your stock. Now, what that means is that you're pushing the cell to the absolute limits. So you are likely going to decrease the life of this battery. Is that a problem? Well, the cost of performance can be quite high. Maybe it's a cost that you're willing to live with. How hard you ride would dictate the length of this battery life. So I haven't had any issues yet, um, but overall this battery is not enough performance for me. It's better than stock, but it's not you know, competition um, worthy. So let's move on to a high performance battery. Now this is a battery being developed by EBMX. Now this doesn't use cylindrical cells, this uses pouch cells. Now the advantage of that is that they've been able to increase the capacity of this battery significantly. So this battery here, 60 volt, 32 ampere hour, has a capacity of 1920 watt hours. So the 1920 is a measurement of its energy that it's able to give you. So if we compare that to this battery, this battery has 3,000 watt hours of energy. So 1,920, 3,000. So that means you're going to get another 50% range over this one, as in, yeah, 50% range more than this. So that is a big advantage. The other advantage to this being a 60 volt battery is that you can use the stock charger so that will work quite well on this battery. And its performance is not limited like this one. So this technically is capable because it's a 5C discharge rate cell. Now what that means is that the cell can discharge five times its capacity in amperage. So that 
that equates to power. So as a 5C cell, this is capable of 15 kilowatt peak, but you don't want to run your batteries peak, so it's probably more comfortable around the 12 kilowatt peak power um, for this battery. So 60 volt standard charger, 12 kilowatts capable, that's a good choice. It also has a battery management system that we'll test. Let's move on to this one. Now this is a 72 volt uh, battery. This is a, a, a lithium ion cylindrical cell. This is a high discharge battery, 10 C rate. So this is actually capable of uh, over 20 kilowatt discharge. But again, you don't want to run at the peak. It's probably more comfortable around the 15 kilowatt discharge. You'll notice it has two leads. These are rated at 200 amps. So, you know, 200 amps at 72 volts, 14.4 kilowatts. So, you know, that's reaching the limits of these. So they put in two, two cords. Again, you'd have to run that right down to your controller. So is it an advantage? Mm, not too sure, we'll check on that. It has a Bluetooth BMS. So you're able to, on your phone, look at the battery um, charge, condition, temperatures, etc. So it's quite a good cell. The disadvantage with this is it's a smaller capacity. So it's a 30 ampere hour. So if we compare that to stock, this is 1,920. This is 2,160 watt hours. That's 3,000. So this one has more capacity than this, but this one has more capacity than that. Performance wise, similar. This can potentially have a little bit more performance. Um, but uh, EBMX are also, also have a 72 volt, which would perform as well as this one. Lastly, we've got this um, 72 volt, 42 ampere hour pack. So this, um, this has quite a large capacity as well, uh, just under three kilowatt hours or 3000 watts, watt hours. So this also has um, the, the capability for long range uh, its peak output, it's a 5C uh, discharge rate as well, so it's comfortable around the 15 kilowatt as well. It's using Samsung 30Q cells, they're quite a good cell, and um, um, an Ant BMS, so another Bluetooth BMS, which is um, quite capable. I've been using these in my race bikes, and they've been proving, you know, holding up under extreme conditions. So, the with batteries, there are some important things. Temperature is extremely important. And I've had a lot of um, customers come back and say, look, my batteries are getting you know, very hot up to you know, 50 Celsius. Um, heat is what kills batteries. They don't like extreme cold. They don't like extreme heat. And the problem on the Suron when we get into higher performance is there's no active cooling in these batteries. Unlike a car, like a Tesla, in a Tesla, every single cell would have a water cooling jacket, like a, a cell that goes around it. And they're able to, if the battery is cold, warm the battery up. If the battery is hot, cool the battery down to keep the battery at the optimal temperature. No space, or not enough space in these things to do that. There's no air cooling, there's no water cooling, there's nothing. So when these batteries get hot, they're at risk of deteriorating their life very quickly. So what I'd like to do is push them to the limits and see how hot they get, how quickly they get hot and how long it takes them to cool down because the battery management system is going to start shutting down the power to protect the cells if it's doing its job. So there's no real shortcuts on, on that problem. You know, if your battery is going to get hot, extremely hot, you're going to lose the, the, the quality of these batteries, the, the life is going to decrease your performance is going to get cut so that's what I want to test them on see how far we can push these batteries till they start um, you know pulling back so it is a problem I don't see any easy solution on how to cool the batteries um, probably like myself have multiple batteries and you would have noticed that you if you've run your bike hard and you come back and you try and charge what's going to happen is the thing won't charge because the battery management system saying, oh no, my batteries are too hot, you have to let it cool down. So if you've experienced that, you're probably getting, you know, your batteries are too hot. So in my case, if my battery's hot, what I do is swap the battery to a cool battery. Um, you know, I've got the luxury of having multiple batteries. 
Now they're very expensive, all these options are not cheap. So I'm hoping that you can um, give me some comments and uh, questions that I can answer so that when you go out to purchase a battery, you know, you can make a, an informed choice, understanding what your battery does and what, what it can't do, its limitations, because if you're going to spend a few thousand dollars, you really want to know exactly what you're purchasing. So I hope this um, uh, has been informative. Please uh, leave your comments and questions, and I look forward to doing the full comparison test uh, very soon. And uh, um, yeah, again, leave any questions that you want. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you.